Okay, today we are starting with a topic on research methods and I've deliberately uh, assigned this one as bots and nuts of your research methods. And my name is uh, Wilbrod Mutale and I'm happy to present this uh, lecture. So let me begin. Uh, when you want to do some studies, there are two things that you can do. You could either observe or do an experiment. So in summary, there are two study methods, observation type and where you do experiments. So I'll go through each one, one by one. So what is this observation? So the observation has to do with you going into an environment, you observe things as they are, you don't interfere, and based on the design of your study, you can come out with some conclusions. On the other hand, when we do experiments, we actually do something actively in the environment to make sure that what we want to observe is actually uh, an outcome of an experiment. I'll come to this uh, much later. So, for experiments, what you do, you identify what you think is what we call the exposure you want to manipulate. I'll give an example of a drug. So when you want to actually know whether a drug works, the first thing that you do is to actually get that drug and get what they say a placebo. And then you can give to two groups of people that have similar characteristics. And then from there, the only difference will be that experiment or the drug that you want to test. So the groups will be comparable in many ways, but then you put that experimental drug to see whether it works or not. But the control group or the group which is not receiving the active ingredients are given what is known as the placebo. I think it's something that you might know. Let's come to observations because I started with the experiments. So for the observations, there are a number of studies that you can do. One of them is called case series. And the second one is called case control studies. We'll go through each one again later on, but not in this lecture. And then there's what is known as cohort studies, and then what is also known as ecological studies. All right, let's then go through the case control studies. What is this animal called case control studies? So if you are a beginner to research, this is a study design where you just simply stumble on something and then you write about it. In medicine, sometimes you could be seeing patients and then you find some unusual patient and then you write a story about this. And this is how information or knowledge is generated because when you write the first case study, another person finds a similar thing maybe in Uganda or Zimbabwe, they write about it. When you put all these things together, you come up with what is known as case series. And in that way then, you can use this case series to develop what is known as an hypothesis, which you can later go on to experiment and see whether it's true or not. So what is the disadvantage or advantage for, for, for these case studies? They are excellent for identifying unusual things. Like I said, something that has not occurred, you just find it and then you write about it and also good for generating hypotheses, as I referred to, that are amenable to uh, experiments. The disadvantage for case series, again, has to do with the general, it's a short thing, uh, you just write, and then the, the, the investigator or the researcher is the one that decides what they write, so no one is actually observing what they are doing. And generally, when you don't have a control, I'll come back to this later on, it really is a weak design. So, let's go to case control studies. So, case control studies, usually um, the disease is what defines your group, okay? So, you identify a disease and then you walk, you walk back in time to determine whether your patient or somebody was actually exposed to the risk factor. So, you've got two groups of people. One has got a disease, one has no disease. Then you work backwards to look at their risk factor and you determine whether that risk factor was an important thing to cause that disease, okay? Let me move on to 
the the importance of uh, looking at controls because if when you are setting up that case control if your controls are not good then your comparator would be a problem and i think that's what we can come to later on and explain how you select your controls and how do you measure an effect in case control studies we usually use what is known as um odds ratio and then for another study design which is known as cohort in this case is the reverse of the case control here the definition of your cases is at a point before they have a disease so the thing that you are going to use is what is known as an exposure somebody is exposed another group is not exposed and then you follow them in time to determine whether they develop a disease or not and then you compare those that had the exposure and those that didn't have. If the exposure is really responsible for the disease, you'll find a difference between these two groups. That's known as cohort studies. Um, the first thing I mentioned was to, to do with clinical or experimental studies. So let me wind up with this one quickly. So here, the thinking is, um, Imagine that um, you think that there's a, um, a disease and it can be cured or treated by a given drug. So what you do, you choose your groups carefully and then when you, uh, you choose them, you give that experimental stud, uh, drug in them. So what you want to know is what is their risk factor? Are they normal at the point when you are deciding that they enter into the study design or into the study? If you know, if they have got some other risk factor, you may not have to include it, or at least control for it. And then, when you give them, there's what they call randomization. It means that the way that people come into the group or into the study is actually not determined conveniently. You assign random numbers so that people come in randomly and then are allocated to either the experimental drug or the control. So in that way, you reduce what is known as bias, which we are going to talk about later, okay? And sometimes you could use patients or clients as their own control. For example, if you've got a drug that you want to use in the eyes, what you can do, one eye can be an intervention and one eye can be a control. And then you follow that over time to see where there's an effect. And there's also what is known as blinding in case in experimental study because you are afraid, and this is a, actually has to do with bias, you are afraid that if people know that they are taking this type of drugs, they are likely going to switch with another person who is taking a different one. Or if the people who are giving know about what drug goes where, they can actually manipulate if they like someone. So you want to make those people unaware of what type of drugs people are taking. That's known as blinding. So you could do single blinding where you just blind the patients. You can do double blinding where you do maybe the patient and the doctor or triple blinding where you actually make the patient, the clinician or the physician and the data analyst unaware of who has received what. And so in summary, we have talked about the study designs and this I called it the bolts and nuts of study design and thinking about this, you either observe or you do an experiment. So when you do those, you are able to determine uh, the effect of, for example, an exposure or if it's a risk factor. In uh, clinical trials, you actually manipulate the active ingredient, which is maybe a drug, and then another group is randomly included in that uh, study group, and you are able to know if the ones that have um, the drug are doing better than the ones that have not received the drug, and none of them knew, and even the people who are analyzing do not know who received what. This is the strongest design in clinical trials and it's what we use to actually come up with inferences. If you've got any questions, you should feel free to again come to our website and post up your question on Facebook as well. We are there and we are happy to answer the questions.